What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Show. It's 2023, and Open FPGA support for the analog pocket is finally starting to hit its stride. More cores have been developed or ported from the Mister, and two Premier Core installers have received numerous updates in tandem. In October of 2022, another developer by the name of Neil Morrison graced the scene with his own tool. This tool is known as Pocket Sync. Pocket Sync is a powerful GUI tool that can be used to manage your various pocket files. In this video, I'll walk you through what to expect with Pocket Sync for Windows. Link to the downloads in the description below. Getting started, you'll want to make sure your pocket is updated to the latest firmware. If you need help with this, I've covered updating the pocket in a previous video. You may use a micro SD card that already has open FPGA cores on it, or a freshly formatted card. If you're using a formatted card, it will need to be initialized by the pocket. In order to do this, select Global Reset under Settings. In either case, I recommend that you use a micro SD card that is 128 gigabytes or more. You'll also want to make sure that the card is formatted as XFAT. With the SD card prepped and ready, head to Neil's GitHub page for Pocket Sync. Click on the link, then navigate to the newest release on the page. Scroll down and click on the link for the installer that corresponds to your platform. In this video, I'll be using the Windows version. Run the installer and install the tool onto your preferred drive of choice. With Pocket Sync installed, you may choose one of the two ways to push updates to your SD card. You may connect your pocket directly with the use of a USB C cable or use an SD card reader. I personally recommend you use an SD card reader as the transfer speeds for the pocket are exceptionally slow. If you wish to connect the pocket directly, check off USB SD access within the pocket's dev section. For those that wish to use an SD card reader, I'll leave a link to a few in the description below. Upon loading up Pocket Sync, you'll be treated to the GUI start screen along with a fun pocket animation. Click on Connect to Pocket, then find the location for your SD card. To your left, you'll see a number of clickable tabs. Before you look through each tab, I recommend you enter settings first. The settings section is simple and has a few options. The first option will allow you to set the color for the animation on the first tab. The second option will unlock the use of the ROM and BIOS archive within the tool. If enabled, the program will be allowed to download files needed for some of the cores, as well as arcade ROMs. If you're comfortable with this, copy the link into the blank space, then hit save. The final option will allow you to skip alternative ROM files for certain arcade cores. Use this option if you would like to have a lean setup. The game section acts as a catalog for all of your ROM files. 
the list is cataloged in alphabetical order by folder name and will display the name of the core as well as the supported file types. The number of ROMs scanned in each folder will also be displayed. Selecting one of the tabs will bring up its associated common folder for the core, allowing you to add or delete ROM files directly. At the top, you'll see a bar with extra functions. Using the search will allow you to filter cores by keyword. Using clean files will delete files from the asset folders. Instance JSON will create required JSON files for CD-based games within the core folders. You may refresh the list to reflect any changes and filter the list by category for easy viewing. Within the cores section, you'll see a list of all installed and available cores for your pocket. If you have a freshly formatted SD card, feel free to click on the cores that you prefer, then install in the upper right. Back on the main menu for cores, you'll see that you can check off updates to filter out all the installed cores. Clicking on an installed core will open up the cores page. Here you'll be able to update or uninstall the core. Selecting required files will pull up a list of required files by the core if any and will allow you to download them if you've enabled the option in Settings. Down below, you'll see the name of the core, version, and core author along with the core's release date. If there's an update to the core, a second green version listing will appear next to the current version. The core author's URL will be displayed alongside a sponsor URL if you would like to support them. A link to the platform's Wikipedia and release history will appear if available. The support section will show the different methods in which the core can be utilized. Finally, you are allowed to view your button mappings and set your core settings with a click of a button. The screenshot section will display all captured screenshots on the pocket. Toggling the checkbox next to select will allow you to export or delete your screenshots. Screenshots can be selected and manipulated at will individually. You may save or share your screenshots and toggle the images upscaling. Within the Save section, you are allowed to back up and view your list of saves, which will be sorted by console type. In order to do this, you'll need to add your backup location to the Pocket Sync's database. Click on Add Backup Location, then navigate to the Saves folder on your SD card. Hit Select Folder to add it to the program. Once the folder has been added, a zip file with your entire set of saves will be compiled. These zip files will be compiled every time new saves are added to your pocket. You'll be able to view the saves list, which will be sorted by date and time of the zip's compilation. Older backups can be applied to your pocket in case of data loss by clicking on the corresponding parts of the timeline. Uncheck Hide Unchanged to view your current list of saves.
The section for save states will show all captured memories on your pocket. These captured states will be separated by core, followed by a section that will contain all of your memories captured from cartridges. The states can be selected and deleted individually or in bulk. Neil has mused that he would like to add library-esque features in the future. A file syncing system that would be compatible with the MISTER may also be added. The platform section will show you a formal listing of each of the cores that are installed on the pocket. The name, platform, manufacturer, and year will be shown. You'll be allowed to apply new images to the core by selecting image packs in the upper right. The image pack section is separated by creator and you'll be allowed to see your current image set on the left hand side. In order to change your image, simply toggle the images you would like and apply the changes down below once you're finished. Cores can be selected individually as in other sections, allowing you to change the different fields that would be displayed. I would like to give a shout out to Neil Morrison for developing this tool. Neil has been rapidly adding features to this tool since he began, and by the time you watch this, more features will have been added. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. If this video helped you out, let me know in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like. I plan on going more in depth on open FPGA cores in the future, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, why not check this video out? Peace.